Hey, listeners, thank you so much for listening to HRN. We want to make your experience as a listener even better, and to help us do that, we'd love your input on our audience survey. It'll only take a few minutes, and by completing it, you can enter to win a $250 gift card from Goldbelly. Visit heritageradionetwork.org slash survey to take the survey and to help us keep growing and improving. That's heritageradionetwork.org slash survey. Thanks for your support. Hey, listeners, Taylor here. In light of the current and frankly ongoing political landscape, we here at Meet and 3 want to share a moment with you before we get into our Season 17 opener. A moment to take a deep breath together and acknowledge and stand in solidarity with communities across the country and the world that are being attacked not only by hateful rhetoric, but by harmful policymaking. While it's easy to give in to fear and isolation, we want to encourage you to find strength in those around you and to join together in resistance not only to survive, but to thrive. Our greatest strength is our love for each other and our ability to come together in the face of fascism. Meet us in the margins. And please, rest. We have joy, we have community, and we will always have tomorrow. Together. With love, the Mean Three community. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. Oh, hey. So glad you can make it. We are taking a meaty road trip to a special someone's wedding. And we're meeting this season's fellows of Meet and Three along the way. Grab your car snacks and your coffee, because we've got an early start. Our first stop is at the market with Bean Metcalf. So it is about 6.45 on a Saturday morning, and I'm taking you with me to one of my all-time favorite places, my booth at the Lane County Farmer's Market. Oh, hi, guys! Yes. Once we're all here, we start putting up our tents, getting the veggies all set up. Celery over there, too? And if there's time, I'll stop and get a quick coffee from Harai Farms. And then it's time to start selling. I can get you down here. Good morning. Good morning. Spinach and salad. Lovely. $12 then. We do have some salad here. We get the best people at market. From local chefs. Really beautiful things you guys do here, obviously along with everything else. Um, you guys make it easy. You do the hard work, so I get to come here and do the easy part and just buy good stuff. To fellow farmers. I think just, you know, being able to walk around and talk to friends and community members. And there's a lot of fun collaboration. And just really great customers. Two reasons. One, I love supporting, like, local actual humans that I get to see face-to-face, which is why I come to the farmer's market versus getting a CSA box. All right, that's us done for the day. Time to take down the displays, pack up the truck, and head out. I hope you enjoyed your day at market, and we'll see you next week. All right, bye, guys. The best part of a road trip? Pit stops. You know the feeling. You get out of your car, stretch your legs, find a place to grab a bite. Maybe it's something that connects you to home. Maybe it's something new to you. Maybe it's something you're addicted to. <laughs> Who knows? But each stop means something on the long road to your destination. Where are we headed today? Well, we're sharing all the places we call home while we make our way to a wedding in Vegas. Instead of a meet in three sides, we have 10 tasty morsels from our team across North America and the places they love on the road trip of life. So get in, loser. We're going road tripping. Meet in three. Meet in three. Meet in three. One meet, three sides. Food, news, and storytelling. A square meal for your ears. Meet and three. All right. Let's head on down to the Lone Star State to see where Sadie El a newbie to Texas, finds a world within a world at their favorite spot. What's your favorite place to grab a drink when you're new in town and there's a water boil notice? Well, Borderland, of course. Let's take a drive to one of my favorite coffee shops in town. Borderland is located inside a little placita and it's this little slice of oddities that's a little different from everything you see in town. It's funky, colorful, and full of art. And it transports you to another place, another world. While I was waiting for my drink, I looked around to see all of the art hanging on the wall. 
My favorite painting is always this one of a boxer. It looks just like my childhood dog, Brandy. Other things hanging on the wall, Bart Simpson running away Mona from Lisa something in a and bright his eyes are frame bare, with the redest the woman woods. striking a, a pose in icy for La mountains with snow no angels. While I was taking in the vibes, I met with Elliot, a longtime Laredo resident that's lived all over the country who's back in town. What I like about Laredo is that it's its own world between two countries. The mix of, you know, the U.S. and Mexico, this is like a mix I'm not of sure both. why I keep coming back to this spot, but something about it being different from everything else makes me feel safe and seen as an outsider. Maybe that's what I love about it. That even in a place so far from home, I can step into another world and feel loved and cared for while getting a good cup of coffee. Or in my case, London Fog. Next up, grab a seat and relax as Maya Okindo takes us on a nostalgic walk through the woods of Delaware. This is Glasgow Regional Park. Every week throughout the summer and fall, I grew up walking through these trails with my mom and two sisters. At some point we stopped, but two weeks ago, my mom and I restarted this ritual. We walked for two and a half miles. <laughs> this time we got a little bit lost while chatting. We usually finish off our walks in silence, listening to the sounds of the woods. That day, there was only one question on my mind. What are we having for dinner? Eventually, we finish our trail and return back to civilization. Before heading home, we walk down the promenade, where my mom always reminds me to slow down. Your time of running ahead of me is over. You will promenade with me. <laughs> this is not a path that is meant for rushing, okay? Okay. As we head home, my mom and I decide that some arepas with black beans, sweet plantains, and crispy pork belly would be a good way to end this day. All right, y'all, it's time to make a pit stop on this cross-country road trip. Let's check in with our resident Floridian, Kia Damone, who's starting her morning with a very shocking, very vulnerable, and problematic realization. I'm not going to lie, Dad, I think I might have an addiction. <laughs> I think I might really be addicted to Chick-fil-A. I ain't going to lie. It's better than... Than drugs. It's better than drugs, but still. Yeah. There's the chicken filo. Come on, ugly dog. Oh. Nico. No. <laughs> okay. Jose, you sent me here. That's true, but. No. Let's go, adventure dog. Thank you. Thank you. What is you it? You order fruit? Nope. Wait, is this your With hash brown? There's fruit in here. Oh, is the fruit extra? Oh, I guess so. Thank you. Well, I'll take it. Yeah. Sausage biscuit? No! Oh, <laughs> that's a chicken biscuit. <laughs> Woo, I was about to be so mad. Nico, get out of here. Oh, the <laughs> so you know how they put the yogurt in this bag too, right? Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, you know, free yogurt, whatever, I'll take it. Somebody else wants No, but then I looked at the package and it says sausage biscuit. And I said, ah! And then I opened it up. I said, okay. Oh. <laughs> I was like, don't do this to me, man. Next up, our executive producer and my co-host, H. Conley, takes us to buy Betty's tamales. 
As an American living in Berlin, one of the things my friend Duncan misses most is Mexican food. So when he came to stay with me in New York, I had to take him to get some tamales from Betty. She's not always there, especially if it's raining, but it was a bright, sunny, 75 degree day in October, so I was hoping against hope I would find her. But when we were walking through the market, I didn't see her in her usual spot. I was telling him to keep an eye out for a small woman with a metal grocery cart when Betty walked right past us. Oh, hey. Morning. Hi, I was just coming to look for you. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Oh, ah, yay. We followed her to her cart in a different spot than usual and got two cheese tamales and some salsa verde. Two cheese. Perfect timing. We went home to eat out on my patio, as in my fire escape. Taking my first bite. Oh wow, the texture is so much better than I thought it would be. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's just a delicious, light, Simple flavor, and yet spicy as can be. Oh my god, I take it back. Mm -hmm. Full of peppers. The tamales Mm -hmm. were perfect as always. Cakey cornmeal, chewy cheese, spicy salsa. What more could you want? Okay, y'all, let me tell you. I, too, have made this pit stop on my road trip of life, and I love Betty's tamales. Betty is a national treasure. She is a gem. And we'll be right back with more Beaten 3 after a brief break. Whether you're a chef or just love going to restaurants, you know the best ingredients are everything, especially when it comes to beef. In Northern Australia, there's a different approach to raising high-quality beef. West Home, based in Queensland and Northern Territory, is working with the land to create nature-led Australian Wagyu. They steward 16 million acres of rangeland, guided by their natural ecosystem, and are led by a belief that if they balance the needs of their cattle with the needs of their environment, both can thrive. Their team of rangeland experts and nature managers use a variety of tools, like satellites that assess grass health and on-the-ground research to monitor and respond to the welfare of the environment. These cows graze on native grasses, like Mitchell grass, which is only found in Australia, along with dozens of other plants, herbs, and seasonal legumes. Cattle are happier when they have the freedom to forage and explore, so West Home ensures they can roam wild, foraging at will for the first two to three years of their lives. The result is high-quality Wagyu beef that reflects the terroir of Northern Australia and a flavor suited to complement any cuisine. West Home believes that when nature leads, flavor follows. Learn more at westhome.com. Welcome back to Meet and 3. For a second stop in the Big Apple, Taylor Graham takes us to our favorite pizzeria in the city, which used to be known for its iconic dollar pizza slice. Its pricing may have gone up by 50%, but its deliciousness remains the same. Let's take a subway ride to my favorite pizzeria in New York City, Two Bros Pizza famously known for serving what used to be their $1 pizza slice. As you approach the corner where Two Bros Pizza resides, you're immediately greeted with the hustle and bustle of pizza pans going in and out the oven and hungry customers looking to grab a quick bite. The first time I went here, I was merely trying to refuel, having spent hours there shopping with my younger sister at the Goodwill next door. After sifting through what felt like an endless sea of clothing racks, we decided that $1 pizza was exactly what we needed. And just like that time, this time I ordered, can I get the white pizza with ricotta? Yes, just one slice. As someone who avoids tomatoes when possible, a good white pizza is greatly appreciated. Overall, the pizzeria embodies the essence of the city itself. A lot is going on and there are many moving parts. And because the building stores are left wide open, Even when you step inside, you are still subject to the New York City soundscape. Plus, the service is fast and efficient, leaving the customer with only one decision to make. What do you guys want to order? Regardless of your topping preferences, I have found that their slices, now priced at $1.50, always deliver. Get your popcorn ready! We're headed to the movies with Hugh Huen for the screening of her food documentary, Rice and Grits, at NYU. 
Hey everyone, so I am sitting in a movie theater at NYU for the screening of my short documentary, Rice and Grits. The film is a love letter to my mother and how her cooking mixes our Vietnamese heritage with soul food. Oh, it looks like it's about to start, so I will see you guys afterwards. <laughs> Thì lúc đó mấy đứa mới kêu được cái tiếng mẹ ơi nè Thì nó nói ừ chắc là mẹ đi làm được xanh nha mẹ đi làm Wow, I am craving a bowl of rice with some of her collard greens and neck bones right now Oh my god, that was so cool to see grandma on the screen. She's so funny. Everybody was laughing the whole time. And I'm here with my nephew, and I'm so glad he got to see it too. It was very touching, and it felt very personal to watch them cooking together. And I'm really happy I get to share our story with some friends. It is a thrilling documentary that one should watch and gain insight of Vimney's culture in Georgia. This really is a full circle moment for me. I remember I was sitting right here and wishing to have a film screen at this festival. So this is a sign for all of you guys out there to just keep pursuing your dreams because it will happen. Next up, we are heading from a dazzling night in New York City to the cozy lakefront of Chicago. Ash Tyler takes us to her favorite place to enjoy a meal and her community in Hyde Park. Grab a jacket and your picnic blanket. I hear it's a beautiful night. I've got my dinner packed and we've got to get there before it gets dark. Let's go. After about 20 minutes or so of walking slash jogging, we have finally made it to Promontory Point. This is a Chicago landmark that continues to charm locals and tourists. I love the point. Um, I think it's a very special place. It's, it's beautiful. The point is part of Burnham Park, and it's a peninsula that goes out into Lake Michigan. I love to walk out here, to paddleboard, have parties, and to bring my meals. And I know that I'm not the only one. I love the community that's out here. I love the camaraderie that is expressed, and it's an awesome space to share. You can basically see the peacefulness of the lake and the city view. In April 2023, the point was officially named Chicago Landmark, with ongoing conservation efforts to preserve this nearly 100-year-old space. Cultural, uh, historical place here in Hyde Park, where many generations have celebrated. Tonight is actually the supermoon. People are perched on rocks and bundled up to protect themselves from the wind and are holding parties, all with cameras looking up at the sky. It just doesn't get any better than this. Whether it's someone's first or 50th time coming to the point, I'm so glad that I get to share this space with them. Now, I can't wait any longer. My pozole smells delicious and it's about to get cold, so I've got to eat. We are finally off to the West Coast. It's time to kick back and wine and dine with Kiki Canudo. We're visiting Bar Bricks, a little hidden gem over in Silver Lake, Los Angeles. Date night is one of my favorite nights, and tonight we're going to Bar Bricks in Silver Lake. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Two? Just two. Okay. We're doing Inside, a sit. Outside, the bar. Yeah, bar, bar looks like a vibe. We tried some delicious white wines. If you don't like it, I'm going to cry. Just so you know. I don't like the orange. <laughs> Do you like it? I don't like it. Can I try something else though too? Another white? Uh, yeah. It's good thing. I like that. Yes, I Which one is this? The Trivian. The dish that I'm getting tonight is the orichetti pasta, meaning little ears in Italian. It has pork sausage and rapini, and it's so delicious. Oh, this looks so good. Thank you. Oh, wow. It's hot. That's very good. I like that. That's a lot. Want some more? Oh, yeah. yeah. And of course, no dinner date is complete without dessert. Trader Joe's has a great apple blossom. It's really good. <laughs> we are not going to Trader Joe's. I think we're going to Trader Joe's for dessert. Reluctantly, we ended up at Trader Joe's. And surprisingly, the apple blossom was actually pretty good. 
All in all, date night was a success. Last, but certainly not least, we are finally headed to Sin City to catch up with Jessie Nicely, who happens to have just gotten married. Let's see what she's doing to celebrate. Woo! When we got engaged in 2023, we knew right away that we wanted to get married in Vegas. We also knew we wanted to eat well. To get things kicked off, we're headed to a place near and dear to our hearts. I'm walking into a Costco uh, outside of Las Vegas, and I'm going to pick up enough pizza for about 20 people. I can't say that going to Costco or planning a wedding (laughs) has been particularly relaxing, but uh, I'm here and we're gonna have some pizza and that's a good thing. We survived Costco and more importantly, the ceremony. Now it's time to celebrate. Let's head to the reception. We're here now at the Cheesecake Factory for our reception, uh, and they did a set menu. We got to choose appetizers, like um, our favorites of the fried mac and cheese balls. There's some calamari. Um, I got my favorite tiramisu cheesecake, and I'm enjoying a Mai Tai, so cheers. After a long night of eating cheesecake, chatting, and wandering up and down the strip, we had one last stop to make before calling it a night. Last but not least, we're on the patio at the Taco Bell Cantina. Uh, It's three in the morning and they're out of Baja Blast, which is unbelievable. Um, But I have a vegan cheese burrito. I have a husband. Uh, Life is pretty good. (laughs) Bye. That's our road trip. I mean show. (laughs) Thank you for listening. Learn more about the guests and topics we touched on this week by checking out our show notes. This episode of Meet 3 was deliciously served up by our whole team. Dean Metcalf, Sariel Grullon, Maya Okindo, Kia Damon, H. Conley, Taylor Graham, Hugh Quinn, Ash Tyler, Kiki Canudo, and Jesse Nicely. Our lead producers on this episode were Ash Tyler and Sariel Grullon with support from Sam Girardi. Meet and 3 is produced by H. Conley and me, Taylor Early. Our audio engineer for this episode was Sam Girardi. Our theme song was composed by Breakmaster Cylinder. This program is supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. Meet and 3 is powered by Simplecast. Meet and 3 is a production of Heritage Radio Network, the world's pioneer food radio station. Learn more at heritageradionetwork.org and follow us at heritage underscore radio and at meaty.gram. And please stay in touch. Whether you have a story idea or would just like to say hey, write us at ideas at meetin3.nyc and that's all spelled out. 